Hey everyone, my name's Walter, and I'm surprisingly back here with another video on the same subject already. If you haven't seen the first video, you should go watch it. I'll link to it in the description. But brief recap, Lucas Werner is a man in Spokane, Washington, who is known for being so creepy he got banned from Starbucks, and international news sources reported it. And this is an essay that he wrote on his website, Conversation Rage, when he was 36 years old. He's 44 now, for reference. Anyway, let's get started once again with Conversation Rage, the writing of Lucas Werner. This starts with one of my favorite lines, where he calls himself an EBT card scientist. I am an EBT card scientist. I will return to college when tuition is free. Feel the burn. My idea is to build a warp communicator that will send a faster-than-light radio signal into space at 310 times the speed of light to connect with anything in a 3,000 light-year radius in a 20-year breadth of time, including Kepler 452b, 1,400 light-years away, which SETI scientists are calling Earth 2.0 for obvious reasons. I can discuss that all day because they're benevolent. They would have destroyed our planet for resources millions of years ago. My next idea is a book called The Idea of Intergenerational Integration. What you are about to read will become the first chapter to that book. I am holding out for women between 18 and 30 years old, without kids. Marriage and children do interest me. I've been saving money by living in homeless shelters from October 2015 to now. I am from Olympia. I lived there for 16 years. I was born in Aberdeen, Washington on November 27, 1979. I grew up in Aberdeen, Hoquiam, Montesano, and 15 miles outside Cosmopolis, Washington on 12 acres of land. I don't need a thing. Well, one thing. That's up to you. Pretty crazy for me to listen to this. Hoquiam is where I'm living right now, and it's a town with like 8,000 people, less than my measly subscriber count. Anyway, Lucas is going to invent faster-than-light communication to talk to aliens. This community college dropout is going to figure out something that's considered impossible by the entire scientific community. And after name-dropping Einstein in the last few paragraphs, he probably doesn't realize how stupid that looks. I will get a place in due time, with the help of Frontier Mental Health in Spokane, Washington. I've been here since March 2016. I came to meet a woman in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, but was apparently catfished. We didn't meet. I didn't meet another from Olympia, either, who said she was going to meet me in Spokane and then did not show up. They both claimed to be 19. It was later revealed to me by a Facebook troll that she was the same person and people were messing with me because I'm poor. I actually have more money saved now than with any of the previous girlfriends. I also have an income enough to afford rent and the aforementioned budget for food. If you're my girlfriend, I will let you live with me for free. I will cook for you fabulous things you've not become aware of yet. I had decided to stay in Spokane anyway for nicer weather in the summer and a change. If you're here, you probably know, but I have an entire video called The Gluttony of Lucas Werner, where I show off his horrifying food creations. He's about as adept at cooking as he is at physics, of course. Does he really think he was catfished because he was poor? Maybe it's because he's a sex pest and people wanted him out of Olympia. He was leaving literal free candy signs around to try to attract young women. My friend count has gone from 340 to over 4,000 since my breakup years ago. I've lost 160 pounds by dropping psych meds in 2007 and walking my ass off. I have given away $25 or more for my EBT card and cash out of my pocket every month since 2012. I usually leave a gift in a highly populated area with a note. I haven't found anyone in at least four years. It could be five years. We can talk about corporate welfare taking 20 times your taxes than money to the poor, and the wealth gap created by NAFTA and throwing money at the mega wealthy, ending the TPP the 49 American corporations that don't pay any taxes while pulling in $100 billion or more a year in profit, the greed of religion, or how the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation give more of their wealth away to House of Charity, UGM, both in Spokane, or any homeless shelter compared to any Catholic or Protestant church. While your Pope talks about it, Bill and Melinda Gates do it, somewhat under the radar, but publicly. The Gates are atheists. Religion is evil. Give me a TED Talk and Bill Gates types like Warren Buffett any day. Ageists are bigots. Also, technically speaking, ageists are inbred bigots. It's a burden of being human to recognize the truth. We're all a little special through no faults of our own. This family tree has no branches. Intragenerational breeding has allowed the oligarchy to make both parties the same. Fifty years ago, the hippies declared that people over 30 could not be trusted. Then the hippies became yuppies. Ronald Reagan convinced the public it was better to give the rich more money than the poor in a maneuver known as trickle-down or supply-side economics. The rich hoarded their money, as has always been the case. The poor spent their money in order to survive. 
This wealth gap caused the 1987 market crash. NAFTA was created in the 1990s to pay back Wall Street campaign contributions to both political parties during the 1990s in order to keep the mega wealthy in control of the political system. Leading to both the Iraq and Afghanistan wars for petroleum profits and to a $4 trillion war debt and $4.2 trillion bank bailout after the 2008 world economic crisis. Now both parties do nothing to help anyone but the mega rich to make more money, while people who have $250,000 or less in net worth have no voice unless that voice is closer to being one of them. So the only one running for president in 2016 who matters is Bernie Sanders, who will be the oldest president, the poorest president, the only one not taking corporate handouts to run for office, and the first non-Christian president in American history. What we have is a case of inbreeding creating a culture of sameness through various entitlements, including youth cultural entitlement. This species has become a family tree that does not branch. Family trees that don't branch are inbred. You know, I don't know what the deal is in this country with electing old people lately. Actually, it would have been the oldest president regardless of who won, Bernie, Hillary, or Trump. And Biden's even older. Yeesh. Bernie Sanders is Jewish, which isn't any closer to atheists than Christians are, Lucas. I think this is where the first chapter of his book begins. The idea of intergenerational integration, how the golden spiral can help us understand ageism. Lucas Werner, part one, Fibonacci steps. The 20th century was a series of battles, misogyny, racism, homophobia, now ageism. These days, women can vote, use birth control, have a say in who they marry, or whether or not to get an abortion. Their bodies are their own. Non-whites can now use the same restrooms as Caucasians and have occupied the highest political offices, and we can all marry outside the bounds of the color of our skin. Same-sex marriage is now legal in every state of the United States of America based upon Supreme Court decision. Battles have been won. There are battles left to be fought. It doesn't matter what a Generation X male says to even the most progressive of millennial females, how popular he is, how much money he has, society still views him as a creep. Sticks and stones, rubber and glue, that's on you. What we have in this country is a battle against youth entitlement. Top 40 music is usually very atrocious. Sitcom television is often quite terrible. This isn't even your average 36-year-old man. If he was any creepier, I think it would create a black hole. But the thought of hitting on teenagers at my age is just killing me. Everything in nature is embedded with a pattern known as the golden spiral. Whether we breed, date, or have sex with people our own age, we are participating in an unnatural coital act of irresponsibility. This type of mating to our own generation is no different than sleeping with members of our own family. Crime, war, mental illness, divorce, illiteracy, domestic violence, drug addiction, alcoholism, homicide, suicide, theft, debt, incarceration, persecution, bigotry, fear, hate, arrogance, greed, and distrust in the two-party oligarchic political system are steadily on the rise. He's really on about this incest thing, isn't he? I really don't see the relationship between incest and sleeping with someone your own age, and neither does anyone else in the world. I say we either lower the age of sexual consent to 13, as is writ of law in highly technological, medically social, freely educated to the highest collegiate level industrial nations in Western Europe, and East Asia, or we raise the sexually consented age to the drinking age of 21. As more conservative elements are due to complain about either move being unnatural, I say we at least keep our mandatory gap between ages of sexual consent within the Fibonacci sequence, the pattern found at every point in nature. We ought to criminalize intragenerational sex for the same reason we do not allow intrafamilial incest between close members of the same kin. Yes, this fucker is advocating lowering the age of consent to 13. There is no way to look good doing that. He thought that was the age of consent in Japan. It's technically their national age of consent, but they have local laws, meaning it varies from 15 to 18. Only the ageists will complain, and wrongfully so, they shall complain as incognizantly as racial separatists in their willful ignorance. Inbreeding is bad for human, animal, plant, fungal, amoebic, bacterial, and viral life just the same. We need a buffer of age for the same reasons of diversification as planting a tree farm is less sustainable than a garden or ranch of many varieties of flora and fauna from differing species and generations. We must free ourselves from the corporate capitalizing of youth culture for the sake of profit from institutional conflict. Segregation did not work for women's rights. Segregation did not work for people of color. 
Segregation did not work for the LGBTQA community in the fight for marriage equality. Each of these social taboos were fought and won by populist dissent. Age-old segregation is unnatural as it is against the golden ratio to be unbound from the cosmic pattern found within Phi from the Milky Way to DNA of the Golden Spiral. Most marriages are between people of the same age. Half of all marriage in the United States ends in divorce. However, most marriages where there is a large age gap last for a longer duration. Most children born to mixed-generation couples have been found to be happier, smarter, taller, muscular, and live longer than offspring born between couples of the same generation. You know, I could honestly just leave up that citation needed thing I used for the entire video. That's the only reason I haven't used it much. There's just too much to fact check here. Let us go off the cited facts and not only encourage an age gap between sexual partners to save the human population from dramatics and extinction. Let us make an age gap a prioritizing necessity in order to make ourselves a fairer, more peaceful, and inclusive world of at least one Fibonacci gap for sex in order to retain the harmony of the golden mean. That which is phi is natural. That which is not phi is not natural. For golden harmony, we must keep at least a Fibonacci step between first sexual encounters with our sexual partners. Connection between gaps is the natural pattern of the golden ratio represented by phi. Gaps lead to collapse. What we need in place of a gap is a step. Watch your step. Your age multiplied or divided by 1.618-0339 will yield the Fibonacci step age. For me, at 36.5 years old, those ages are 22.558 and 59.058, so 23 and 59. In order to retain a golden sexual pattern, I ought to not begin a relationship with a woman today older than 23 or younger than 59 in order to have a relationship that the golden ratio and nature itself sees as naturally harmonious for me. The golden spiral does not want me to begin dating anyone between the ages of 24 and 58 years old in order to maintain the harmony of a Fibonacci step. Okay, yeah, here we finally have the way to apply the Fibonacci sequence to find a partner. You divide your age by phi, or 1.618. 1.6 is probably good enough, but he's trying to sound smart. I'm the same age as he was when he wrote this, so I'd have to date a 23-year-old or younger. Not that I'd necessarily be unwilling to date a 23-year-old, but I'd look pretty creepy being this insistent on it, just like he did. We must fight prejudices of ageal segregation and the scientific illiteracy of intragenerational disparities between the sexually impoverished and a wealth of undistributed love. We cannot allow ourselves to cherry-pick what it means to be a progressive. We cannot allow religion and bigotry to come within the same reference frame. Should ageism not be a social injustice, then we must question ourselves first in our justification of both our hatreds and our clinging to pseudo-scientific reasoning in order to stick to our own group as the devils of oligarchy would demand, through advertising and marketing, as was done in the past to place on a pedestal the meritous facade of misogyny, racism, and homophobia. Ageism is no different. Lucas, you're not legally being kept from marrying a younger woman. He compares this to gay marriage being legal, but does he want legislation to keep people from calling him a creep? That doesn't sound very American of him. You'll have to let me know what you think about this absolute madness, but that's about all the time I have for you today. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you have something to say, I sure hope you let me hear it in the comments. I will be reading those when the video is new. I didn't come anywhere near saying all there is to say about it, and I might make a video narrating comments about Lucas when I'm done with the series. If you're new here, consider subscribing for more of the same, and whatever else I want to talk about. There should be more content in the near future. Big ups also to my fabulous patrons, who actually support me more directly over on Patreon. It really helps me make ends meet. So we're still nowhere near the end of this crap. There will be at least one more video of this. I'm pretty sure at this point that people do want more, so they shall have it. Have a great day, everyone, and don't call Lucas a creep or it might be a hate crime.